Welcome to this short demonstration on Phone View from Unified FX. Phone View has the ability to manage multiple clusters at once. We are opening a previously saved file with cluster information and we can extract the phones that are registered to those clusters. Once we have those phones, we can select them, we can take screenshot images to understand the state that they're currently in, we can look at a tabular view of the data, and we have automatic groups of the data that's been captured. So for example, we can filter on user J to look at two users, Jack and James. However, we can further refine our search by clicking another item in this case a cluster and we've chosen just a single phone through two mouse clicks. So we'll clear that selection and now we'll pull additional data. So we we'll select all devices and we we'll send a device, a switch and a call stat request and you can see that data has been populated. It's also available automatically within the filter view on the left through its automatic grouping and selecting other criteria such as MOS can make many tasks simpler such as analysing problems with quality of service. So we'll uh, now select just two phones to do some call testing. We'll select two of the same model and we'll zoom in so we can see them a bit better. Now we'll do an automatic screenshot of five seconds on the left hand phone and will enable an action refresh on the right. So we will get automatic updates on the left whereas the phone on the right as we enter digits or dial numbers it will take a screenshot so we can see how that's updating. So the call has been placed and it can now be answered. In this case we've used the toolbar which has some shortcut buttons, in this case soft key 1 for answering the call. But we also have the ability to use function keys. So we're selecting the phone and function 1 is used to place the call on hold. So music on hold would now be played through. And we can see that in the screen state. Okay, so we can now resume that. We'll use a function key again, so function 1 to resume. And to end the call, we can use function 2 for soft key 2. Other features such as transfer, conference, and many other features can be tested using this method. So we'll uh, now enable a refresh again, and uh, we'll bring in the other phones by unselecting that filter and we'll zoom out so we can see all five phones and this time we're going to send a bulk dial command to all phones so we're going to choose the dial instruction from the drop down list and we're going to enter our MWI on number and we'll send that through to all five phones so we can see the envelopes appeared because of the MWI instruction. Uh, we'll update to see that on the remaining phones, we'll see the envelopes. However, looking at the phone screen to detect if MWI is on a phone is quite a cumbersome task. So we actually have that data available within the tabular view. Uh, it's not populated at the moment, so we'll need to refresh that with some device information. Okay, so we now see that it's been updated. Uh, however, we can just choose two phones, one phone, whatever quantity we like, and send a, another instruction through. In this case, we'll turn MWI off for two devices. Uh, we'll refresh that data. We can see that's been updated. And we'll do the same thing for all phones at once. So bulk dialing can be done on any number, it could be a voicemail pilot, it could be done for load testing etc. Um, there's uh, pretty much no limit to the calling flexibility that PhoneView provides. So 
uh, we've refreshed the phones. Now the next thing we'll show you is uh, text message capability. So we'll click the text button on the toolbar, typing in a, a short message and we're confirming that and you can see that sent through. This is useful for you know administration messages, uh, system updates that you want to inform users about. Just a very quick and simple way to communicate with uh, end users. So we'll uh, clear that out. We sent a soft key 3 instruction to all the phones to, to cancel that message. Okay, so uh, the next thing we'll look at is command macros. So we've got one we prepared earlier. And this command macro is effectively a key sequence and it has a screenshot in between. So this can be used for multiple things. In this case, we are actually resetting the phone background to its default. However, this could be effectively any setting on the phone. Therefore, uh, the kind of phone specific settings that in a lot of situations an engineer or an end user may have to uh, change themselves is uh, available for a bulk update, very simply. So we can see the background has been reset in this case. However, that obviously does interfere with what the user is doing. Uh, there is another method that PhoneView provides and this is using the phone personalization capability. This is a powerful feature because it does not interfere with uh, the user. So for example, we're just setting up uh, some activities on the phones. We've got uh, one person with a directory button pressed and another two people in an active call. We've got a lighthouse image that we've chosen and we're going to push that through to those three phones by setting the background and uh, without interrupting the activity of the user we can see that that background image has been set. Okay so uh, now we've set that background back to its previous state we can uh, clear the call and remove the directory buttons and the next thing that we'll show you is some extension mobility capability that PhoneView has in particular um, we have the ability to log individual users in and out or entire groups of people so in this case we've chosen Lewis Taylor we've clicked the log out button from the toolbar and we'll see in a few seconds that his phone has been logged out and it will return to its logged out state with its logged out extension number of 2102. Now, deliberately, we actually maintain the name of the person on the phone. So, phone view will keep a record. So, it, it's recorded that Lewis Taylor is still on that, or was previously on that phone. And we can perform a login instruction to log Lewis back onto that phone. As mentioned, this can be done with all phones at once, and in this case, you may notice that it's actually being performed across multiple clusters at the same time. Uh, phone view does not distinguish clusters, only the capability, but that will be detected when instruction is sent. As long as it's configured appropriately, there is no difference. So, we have all the users, the information has been maintained, although they have been logged out. So we're now sending a login instruction and that can be done from any view. In this case, it was performed from the data view. And as we watch the phones update, we will see the users being logged back in to the appropriate phone. Okay, so the, the last thing that we'll show you is a uh, management capability for phone configuration. So we're right clicking on Lewis Taylor's phone and we've selected manage and this opens up the call manager administration page for that device so we can now change any settings on that phone in this case we'll select the device profile of the person that's logged in and we're going to add a speed dial for them so we'll add in 2000 and Emily Jones and we'll save that 
it'll take a few seconds for the change to take effect however it only took a few seconds to implement that change there's no need to uh, use the, the kind of text based searching and filtering within the comage administration page because phone view gives you the visual representation of the phone and with a simple right click you can be taken straight through so we can see that that speed dial has been configured and we're now going to test the speed dial in this case we're using line 3 remote instruction to activate it and the call is being placed and if we do another refresh we'll see that call state that concludes our demonstration. Please visit unifiedfx.com for further details.